Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Biblical Foundations class. And tonight we are going to dig into the Word. We've been uh, studying the last couple of weeks in Galatians chapter 1. And tonight we're going to be taking a further look at that. Uh, but right now, uh, let's go to the Lord in, in a word of prayer. And uh, also a good praise report is uh, Marie uh, was able to come home from the hospital. And so she's back at home. So let's continue to keep her in prayer as, as she continues her recovery. Uh, dearest Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you. And first of all, we do thank you for Marie being out of the hospital and out of uh, immediate danger there and be able to be back at home with her family. And Lord, we do thank you for that. We ask that, Lord, uh, you would bless her and help her to fully recover and, and just get stronger each and every day. And Lord, we just also um, ask for your blessings tonight on our study through your word. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies how you've shown so much love and, and kindness to us, Lord, in everything. And Lord, we just ask that you would open our understanding, help us to learn more about you as we uh, study in the Word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, tonight for Biblical Foundations class, we're, we're going to continue our study of staying the course in troubled times. We're looking at uh, Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And uh, last week, we, we did a pretty good look at verse, verse 7. So tonight, let's pick it up in verse 8 and 9, but let's read that. Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Now, it'd be uh, good for us to uh, understand meaning of uh, the word accursed you know because he says but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than what we preached unto you let him be accursed what is that that what does that word accursed mean well the occur that word accursed in greek it's uh anathema and it means um to be banned or excommunicated accursed cursed uh greatly uh this is something that uh Paul is putting very strong words on this. This is this person has no part, you know, in in the uh, pro proclamation of the truth. So, you know, and he's very particular about it. He says, though we, so he includes himself. You know, he he says, hey, you know, even if we come to you and we bring a different gospel, we're to be accursed. If an angel from heaven comes and preaches a different gospel, they're to be accursed. You know, this is um, very specific, and so he says. Um, but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So what, what gospel did they preach? And that would be what we would need to know. What did they say? What, what was the gospel message being proclaimed? Well, Paul outlines that actually pretty good here in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So let's uh, turn back a few pages and let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Take a look at verses 1 through 8, and let's read that together. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. So now he's declaring the gospel that he had preached unto them, which, ye have al which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So he's about to proclaim the gospel that he had preached to the Corinthians, and that they believed, and that they stand in. Okay. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, this is, now here's the gospel message that he preached. Here it is, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of, of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Wow. So, you know, when we look at this, you see Paul is proclaiming the gospel message very clearly, very 
very clearly. What does he say? That Christ died for our sins for what we did, according to the scriptures. So the scriptures have point to Christ dying for our sins. He died, you know, Daniel says that the Messiah would be cut off, but not for himself. You know, pointing the fact that Christ was dying for others. Isaiah uh, talks a great deal about it. You know, so we see the scriptures again and again pointing towards what Christ would do, and he did. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he did do that on the third day. As uh, Jonah was a shadow and type of this, you know. And the scriptures also told us that, uh, again, that he would, uh, his, his kingdom no, would be without end. You know, so um, there, was, there was a need. It was a shadow and type of it with Abraham and Isaac. You know, Abraham uh, taking Isaac to sacrifice him. And then God gave uh, there he had gave a replacement, you know, uh, and so a substitute. And this is what Christ did. He, you know, he substituted the place of death that we deserved. He took that himself. So we see the gospel message clearly uh, given here, evidenced by witnesses. We see the witnesses listed and, and how that all happened and came about. And Paul even describing himself as the least of the apostles, that he is not meet to be called an apostle because he persecuted the church of God when he was Saul, yeah, he did that, but God changed him and his name also to Paul. Amen. And so we see that this is the gospel message clearly given. And Paul is saying back in Galatians chapter 1, let's go back over there. He says, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel than that which we preached unto you, let him be accursed. And so, you know, were there people in that day bringing a false gospel? Well, there were. There were false apostles. There were false prophets. They were bringing a message that was contrary to uh, what the uh, the true apostles of the Lord were, were bringing out. They were bringing out things that were contrary to scripture. And, uh, and so this had to be addressed. It had to be addressed immediately because false teaching left to go you know to go crazy i mean well look what happens you have um you know whole church groups today that were started off on a lie you know uh, cults and and we see cults that have gone absolutely uh, nuts you know these days and uh and when i say that it, it's it's they have they've grown because people don't know what the scripture says they don't know what the Bible says. So because they don't know what the Bible says, they believe these uh, these people, that uh, these false uh, teachers, these men that crept in unawares, they believe them, and uh, they just jump right on board with what they're teaching. This is why it's so very important for us to be grounded in the Scriptures. We have to get in the Word of God. We have to be grounded in this because you don't want to be found bringing um, something that's contrary to the Word of God to people you don't want to be telling them something that's not so amen i mean you know the who is that uh these like the mormons jehovah witnesses all of these you know bring in false teachings you know forward um the the catholic church the same thing they bring false teachings forward because they don't stick to the word of god and we are supposed to stick to the word of god rather than uh lead people astray um let's look at verse uh second corinthians for uh, chapter 11 second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 through 15 for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. See, here he's outlining again in the scriptures that these are false apostles, deceitful workers, and they transform themselves into apostles of Christ. So they appear to be uh, godly uh, men uh, bringing forth, you know, God's word, but they're bringing the word of man. They're bringing the word of Satan, actually, they, because the Bible says here, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into a into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, his ministers, whose ministers, Satan's ministers, also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. See, Satan has his ministers. They're they're sitting in pulpits of of huge huge churches today, 
bringing forth all kinds of garbage that's not even biblical and and yet they they get you know huge followings with people coming after them um we see that all over the place you know we see that in bethel church in reading we see that with uh, some of these television ministries and and stuff where you have these guys preaching it uh preaching not biblical teachings they're not preaching from the bible they're not preaching uh, things correctly um, they're adding in all kinds of their own ideas their thoughts and uh, and it's a sad sad thing because they're leading people astray the bible says that they're false they're false apostles deceitful workers and uh, we know that they are satan's ministers that's what it says here um, verse 15 so when you see those kind of things you know be careful what you watch be careful what you're ingesting you know because it could be deadly to you you know we we're careful with what we eat you know because we know that if you eat poison it's gonna it's gonna be bad for you for you physically it'll kill you you know same thing spiritually if you're if you're you know consuming you know this spiritually dead fruit uh, of these these false ministers it's going to get you uh, off track so stick to the word of god you know stick to the bible stick to that and just because they say well this is in the bible doesn't mean it's in the bible you got to check it out yourself you got to read it for yourself and you got to see if what they're saying is in context with what the bible is saying see because they there's they're deceitful right so deceitful means they're tricky they they deceive people so you have to uh, understand that they'll take a verse they'll pull it out of context and make it into something that's not that's how the uh, the word of faith um you know word of faith is such a dangerous and deceitful lie of hell um word of faith will uh, will tell you oh yeah they'll tell you yes you know god god heals and it's his will for you to be healed and and uh, then then here's the here's the knife that they stick right into your heart that if you're not healed it's your fault you did that yeah your lack of faith that's what it was see that's that's where they get you they just like and it's like of course it's not true god has it's god's will he some people he will heal some people he won't heal and that is his will it's his providence it's his business we give it to the lord we say lord no matter what state i'm in i'm going to be thankful i'm going to be grateful you know paul besought the lord three times you know they the word of faith people even criticize paul and say that paul didn't have enough faith to be healed are you kidding me apostle paul i think he had totally enough faith you know but he understood what god's will has everything to do with things and you can't just say i'm going to force god to do whatever you, God is not some heavenly butler that does your bidding and you're in you thinking that you can command God you are you are being one of these guys you're being a deceitful worker a false a prophet a false apostle you're being a uh, a minister of Satan if you're thinking that you can try to boss God around you're never gonna boss God around by the way God is sovereign he's God and uh, you have no right to do that. You're a servant of God. And I and last I ever checked, no servant ever comes up and bosses the uh, the uh, the Lord of the house around. Amen. It just doesn't happen. You know, and uh, talking about God, you don't boss God around. Um, sad to see. Okay. So another representation. I'll just, just throw this out there. Here this week, we had a rather large church here in, in Seattle, in Seattle or that area that had a minister that you know, flew in to perform a service and they were very uh very forward about the fact that they weren't going to abide by uh you know masks they weren't going to do anything you know they're going to do what they want to do and and the whole attitude of the minister was very um disturbing because we're supposed to be walking in humility you know we're supposed to be walking in love and the, the news uh, people questioned him and asked him you know this is an interview you know you can see it you can probably you still watch that broadcast but they asked him um what if somebody gets covid and he says it's got nothing to do with me it's not my my issue i don't i don't know do you know why he said that because word of faith says if you don't have enough faith then and, and you, that happens to you then that's your fault see it's a, it's a false teaching it's a false gospel you know, the last I checked, the scripture says that we're not to tempt the Lord our God. You know? 
you don't intentionally put yourself in a dangerous situation and just say, well, you know, God's going to protect me. You jump into a lion cage and see how that works. You know, Daniel got lowered into the lion's den, not his own will. God protected him. But if you go jumping into that den of lions, let me guess, let me tell you what's going to happen. It's not going to be pretty. You see, you don't tempt the Lord. And, and what we're seeing today is because people, you know, people are tired. People are exhausted. They've been dealing with this stuff for months now. And, um, and, they're, they're, and they're frustrated and they have all these things. And, and they're ready to just, you know, have a change and, and ready to run out there and do what they want to do. The danger in doing that is, of course, still real. There's still a real virus. It is real. It's not fake. It's not a, a fake news issue. It is a real virus. It does kill people. People have died. People have gotten sick. People that we know in our church have gotten sick, ill, deathly ill from this. Um, and though people recovery rate is good, and that's a wonderful thing. Thank God for that. Um, not everybody recovers. And some people are dealing with uh, things that might last many years. So instead of putting yourself in direct intentional danger because you're just going to do what you're going to do, it would probably be a good idea for you to not um, tempt the Lord. I'm just telling you, you know, um, but the attitude is everything. And the attitude that I saw from that preacher was revolting, absolutely revolting because it was it was pride, it was arrogance, and uh, that's what the world's seeing. That's what, you know, you have to be mindful that when you go out there and you put yourself out there, that you're, that's what the world sees as a representation of Christianity. If you call yourself a Christian, you go out there and you don't act Christ-like, um, you know, that's what they, that's why they, they equate Christians. And, and so it really was, uh, the, I mean, the media is not already doesn't like uh, Christians uh, to begin with. And, and doing something like that just adds to that fuel to that fire. And so it's not a good representation at all. So, but that man, you know, he, he'll have to deal with that between him and the Lord. But the problem is that uh, there's a lot of people that just jump right into it. They just jump right in, you know, wholesale and start uh, doing what these guys say do. And remember that, that Satan's got his ministers. If they're not sticking to the gospel, they're not sticking to the word of God. You know, it's a bad thing. Uh, let's go to First Timothy. First Timothy chapter one. Verses 19 and 20 it says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. Wow. Not a good, not a good situation. Alexander and Hymenaeus were blaspheming. And Paul delivered them over to Satan so they could learn not to blaspheme. You know, we're supposed to hold faith and a good conscience. Faith and a good conscience. Not one that just says, ain't got nothing to do with me, I don't know. Are you, if you're a minister, a pastor, then you have to have a love for the people that you're ministering to. As a you know, as a under shepherd of the great shepherd, right? Jesus is that great shepherd, but you, you're, you're, are you a hireling? Because a hireling is somebody who doesn't care about the sheep. They're just doing it for the money. And un unfortunately, when a person says that they don't care, that it's not their business, they don't, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm very concerned about the health of the people that go to our church. I mean, in the body of Christ, in general, across the planet, I'm concerned about. I mean, this is Christ's body. It's his people. 
I'm concerned about their I'm concerned about their health, the physical health. I'm concerned about their spiritual health, where they're where they're at in their walk with Christ. I'm concerned for people that don't know Jesus about because I don't want a single person leaving this earth without knowing Jesus Christ as Savior. I'm deeply concerned about that. And I'm not at a place in my life, nor I pray to God ever will be, that, uh, that I just take the attitude of, oh, I don't know, it's got nothing to do with me. I never want to be that way. Lord, forgive us if we have ever, ever taken that, that callous look at life. Every life is important. Every one of them. Every human being born on this planet is got value and we had better start treating them that way because they're made in the image of god they may not be walking with god you know but that doesn't mean we devalue somebody because they're not walking with god you may disagree with your brother and sister you may have minor points of disagreement it doesn't mean you devalue them because you disagree with them you don't devalue anyone you show the love of christ to those that are saved those that are lost you continue to show the love of Christ to everyone whether they're your friend whether they love you or whether they're your enemy and they hate you you still show the love of Christ if you don't do that it becomes very difficult to say well I love God do you love God but you don't love your brother How's that work? Because that's against the scripture. You see, we gotta love everybody. And love doesn't say, not my problem. You know, I, I heard brothers and sisters I heard brothers in Christ say this before. Somebody's sick and ill, right? Somebody's going through something. And I've heard somebody say this before. They're like, oh, sucks to be you. Really? What kind of Christianity is that? What kind of relationship with Christ is that? What kind of love for your brother and sister is that? Because I, I, I don't understand that. If you, don't, if you don't have compassion and love and care and concern for what's going on with your brother and sister, how are we walking in the love of Christ? holding faith in a good conscience, right? You know, some people put that, they put faith, holding faith in a good conscience, they put that away, right? Concerning faith, they've made shipwreck. Hymenaeus and Alexander, they made shipwreck because they were blaspheming God. Do you blaspheme God? I pray you don't. Titus, chapter 3. Titus, chapter 3, look at verses 10 and 11. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth and being condemned of himself. You know, when a person gets off track, they're to be warned, you know. First of all, not warned like, you know, uh, I'm putting myself above them or any kind of thing. Not like that. That's not, that's not going to help, okay? You come at somebody with a self-righteous attitude like you never messed up in your life, you're not helping anyone, okay? You, first of all, recognize the fact that you're just as messed up. You've messed up in your life. You've repented of your sin. I pray you have. If you haven't, repent, okay? But you've repented of your sin, I trust. And you're, and you're walking with Christ. And you see a brother who's struggling or a sister who's struggling. You don't, you don't go up to them and, and, and look down on them, right? Because they're going through a difficult time. No. You reach out to them, the love of Christ, and try to help them get restored to God. Repentance, right? Brother, sister, what you're doing there, that's not, 
what God wants. He, he says in his word this. Right? Restore. Restore. That's what you're trying to do. Sometimes you'll get people that are hard-headed, hard-hearted, whatever you want to call it, and, and they refuse. They'll refuse. They're, maybe they're preaching something that's absolutely wrong, and you go to them and say, Look, um, what you're doing there isn't right. Like, for example, um, you know, when they went to... Um, they went to Eugene Peterson about the Message Bible, and they were talking. They talked to him about some of the things that he had put in there, and um, you know, he didn't change it. Revisions of the, you know, new updates of the the thing came out. Still the same issues. Jesus calling. Um, Sarah Young goes and changes the things that she said Jesus told her, which not exactly sure that's. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not right. Don't. Um, waste your time with Jesus calling. That's not Jesus that was talking to Sarah Young because Jesus in Sarah Young's book uh, contradicts Jesus of the Bible. So guess who's right? The Lord Jesus Christ of the Holy Scriptures, right? Not Sarah Young's imagination. So um, she needs to repent. She does. You know, in making a merchandise of the church because the church has bought off on this stuff Today, anybody comes around and makes a claim and puts out a, a, some book about how you're going to do this and you're going to become rich and wealthy or you're going to 40 days, you're going to have, you know, all the answers to everything that you've ever had. And, and they throw these books out there and, and people just go buy them because they just, uh, you know, they think they want they want that want it quick, want it now, you know, give it to me right now, that kind of thing. Listen, the answers are in the scripture. You save all that money. Because the answer is right here in the Bible. You just got to read it. And then you got to obey it. Yeah? Rather than getting caught up in all that other stuff. But a person that's a heretic, they get off track. Teaching something that's not right. You warn them. It says, after the first and second admonition, reject. They don't want to listen? I'm sorry. That's what it says. You know, and it says, knowing that that he that is uh, that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. See, that's why sometimes people. I mean, you get you get this idea like, oh, I have this idea. I think it's like this. Does that match what the Bible says? Does it match Scripture? Because your idea, if you say, well, this is my thought and then it, it contradicts scripture, then you need to change the way you're thinking, right? You need to get your thought right. Uh, what, whatever it is, you know, um, you know, you, you say, well, I got this, uh, you know, not everything, every voice out there is from God, right? Not every voice that's speaking out there is from God. Let's go to this next verse and I'll show you what I mean. First, first John chapter 4. First John chapter 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of a God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. There's a lot of false prophets out there. There's still a lot of false prophets out there today. You know, you got people out there um, down in uh, New Apostolic Reformation and, and, and down there in uh, Redding, California, prophesying all kinds of false stuff. You got uh, TV preachers prophesying all kinds of false stuff. You know, <laughs> prophesying an end to... Uh, to COVID that they're, they're doing, you know, I mean, some guy was, uh, trying to take, you know, authority over that. Uh, that was, uh, you know, he hasn't been too successful with that. You know, you have people prophesying all kinds of stuff, but if it's not biblical, if it's not, if it's not what the Bible teaches, then it's wrong. It's a false prophet. You know, you got people, do you understand that there's a, there's a very, very, um, hefty price for being a false prophet <laughs> extremely 
hefty price. We're going to talk about that a little bit more here in a little while, if we can get to that. Um, but Old Testament is very specific about it. And a false prophet, how many prophecies do you have to have wrong before you're called a false prophet? One. <laughs> just just one. Just one wrong. But yeah, it was it's sad. Bethel Redding, California, they're teaching their folks to prophesy, right? They're teaching them to prophesy. So that should tell you something right there. But they're teaching them to prophesy, and they're telling them that the number of wrong ones they get is actually a sign of their success. I'm not sure how that works. But I'm pretty sure that's not of God. Like, I'm 100% sure that's not of God. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, come on, try the spirits to see whether they're of God. Just because they say they are doesn't mean they are. Test them out. Check out what they're saying. Is it line up with the scripture? Marsha and I went to a uh, a church one time. We sat in the back row. This guy gets up and he's and he's uh, starts speaking in tongues. Right, we're sitting there, and then he starts interpreting what he just said. So of course they're supposed. That's not how it works. But okay, he starts interpreting what he says, and what he interprets, what he's saying, is not biblical. Not not any of it was biblical. And I'm turning to the scriptures and I'm saying, that's not right because the Bible says this. That's not right because the Bible says that. That's not right because the Bible says this. My wife and I looked at each other. We were like, we're out of here. Man, we got up and left. Because we tried the spirits to see if they're of God. And it wasn't. It wasn't God. That wasn't from God. If it had been from God, it would have been lined up with scripture. It wasn't. And therefore... It's easy to determine it's not of God. That's why you have to be a student of the Word of God. You've got to be a student of the Scriptures. You've got to get in there. Not just a random, they, oh, they quoted one verse. You know, yeah, I mean, Satan can quote one verse. He, he's not a Christian, and he's not going to heaven, and he's not following Christ. So he can quote a verse too, but he doesn't quote it correctly. He always does it out of context. He does it to twist to get you to sin. That's his motivation in there to destroy you. So you have to get in the, the word of God. You got to read it. You got to you got to find out is this in context? Is this consistent thought throughout the word of God? Is this what the word of God teaches as, as doctrine or is this just something that I'm pulling out of context somewhere? The Bible talks to us and the Old Testament talks concerning a famine of the word of God. You know, and I truly think we're seeing that today, I, it, even though we have the ability to put the word of God out through television, through the Internet. You know, we, we are able to spread it all over the planet. The issue, the problem is, is that what is being spread all over the planet a lot of times isn't scriptural. I mean, there's so much of the there's so many false teachers and stuff like that out there in in the church. I, I feel so bad, you know, for sincere Christians that love Jesus Christ, that that hunger and thirst for, for him and more of him are getting duped by these charlatans out there because they're not spending time in the Bible themselves. you got to read it for yourself. You have to. You know, God gives you the Holy Spirit. God gives you the Holy Spirit as the comforter, right? And the comforter... He reminds you of everything Jesus has said. So that's why you have to, you know, you pray. I mean, pray, ask God. Does anybody lack wisdom? Let him ask God who gives all men liberally and upbraideth not. I mean, ask God for wisdom. Ask him to help you understand his word. He will. And then if you get, if you're reading through the word of God, then in you, if there's something you don't understand and you read it, pray about it. Uh, you know, and you still having troubles with it then? I mean, man, call someone. Hey, I'm reading this and I'm quite getting this. Can you, can we talk it through each other? Let's, can we look at it together? You know, maybe I'm missing something where I can, you know, really help me understand this. I mean, we're there for one another, right? That's the body of Christ. I mean, we're supposed to be there to encourage one another, strengthen one another. Iron sharpens iron. I mean, we're... We're supposed to be there for each other. You know, um, we don't have time to go through all of that. But I would encourage you, I would really encourage you tonight, 
uh, make a note of this, that First John chapter 4, read that chapter, First John chapter 4, read that chapter all the way through, read it all the way through, you know, um, so important for us to be showing the love of God, remember there's no fear in love, perfect love casts out all fear, all of that's here in this, in this chapter, read this, get this into your heart, understand that God is, is, he loves you, God is love, that's, that's in this, that's in this chapter, God is love, you know, it's in this chapter, and it shows you what the love of God is, not that we loved him first, but that he loved us, what, he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, to keep payment, you know, and he's saying if God loved us this way, we're supposed to love one another like this, I, I guess we should probably just, let's just, we're just going to read it, and we may not get to the other thing till next week, that's okay, let's read this, and the reason I think we should read it is, um, it gives you an example of understanding why I think that a pastor that says, you know, not my problem, I, I think there's a big problem with that, so let's read it, First uh, John chapter 4, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, even now already is it in the world. And that would be, you know, like Scientology and, um, and Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you know, it, the, these kind of things that they have this false understanding of what Jesus did, uh, who he was, you know, and they preach it wrong. Um, you know, these guys would be com coming from the spirit of Antichrist. That's where the cults originate from, the spirit of Antichrist. Um, it says here, verse 4, You are God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. That's how come these false preachers and false uh, ministries are able to gather such a huge crowd. Um, that's why they do, uh, because they're of the world. Therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. You know, No accountability. No, uh, you need to repent of your sins and trust the Savior. If you don't have Christ, he's the only way. If you don't have him, you're going to go to hell. You know, they... they had a perfect opportunity to get Joel Osteen to comment on that on I think it was Larry King Live, Larry King Live, and it was sad. I watched the interview and and it was sad. Perfect opportunity to present Jesus Christ as the only way, and yet he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Even though the Bible tells us this, Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me." You know, the Bible clearly teaches that Christ is the only way. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but yeah he uh, came up with some kind of uh, people placating comforting thing saying that well you know I'm not gonna say that because God has his people you know he had yeah he, a bunch of yeah I heard you Satan yeah speaking through him yeah that's because that's what that was that was Satan his ministers Right? Because any minister that doesn't promote Jesus Christ as the only way to get to heaven as a false antichrist uh, preacher. I mean, it's a false minister, a minister of Satan. Yeah, so there it is. So anyway, uh, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and a spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not uh, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this is manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and that he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess 
that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. He that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So we have, you know, we have uh, God telling us that we're supposed to be walking in love. We have to have love for one another. And love for one another tells the truth. You know, I'm not doing you any favors if I lie to you. I'm not doing any favors if I come behind you and comfort you and say, oh, you poor misunderstood thing. It's okay. God is totally okay with your sin. You just don't worry about it. You know, you said a prayer one time. You're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. No, I'd be a false minister. I wouldn't be showing love of God to you. I'd be lying to you, comforting you on your way to hell because you got to separate yourself from sin. You can't continue in sin when you come to Christ. Christ is the only way of salvation. You've got to repent of your sins, trust him as Savior, and, and then don't go back to the vomit, okay? Don't go back to the mud. Stay out of it. You Stay in Christ. Walk with him. You can't say, I, I, I am following Jesus, and then you just turn around and you leave because you say, i got a fire insurance policy in my back pocket. I'm going to go live my life the way I want to live it. You're deceiving yourself. And anybody that's going to make you comfortable in your sin is just giving you a soft pillow on your way to hell. Okay? A person should love you enough to say, Brother, sister, what you're doing is wrong. You're in sin and you need to repent. It's hard to tell somebody that in love, but you have to do it. You want somebody to tell you when you're wrong, don't you? I do. If I'm sinning against you, if, I've, if I'm doing wrong, I want somebody to come and say, Brother, you know, you're messing up. You're, you're in sin. You need to repent. This is, this is not right. The way you talk, the way you at, your attitude, whatever. And I will. Why? Because I fear God. I don't want to be in sin. And I don't want to, I don't want to teach wrong and, and deceive people and lead people in, in the wrong way. I want everybody. I want everybody to walk with the Savior. I want everybody to have a life that's that's full and abundant and in in purposeful in, in him. You know, I want everybody to have the word of God to rely on and depend upon because every single person deals with troubles and trials and, and things come against their lives. You name one person out there that never has a problem. You know, sometimes people will think that way and they'll think, well, so-and-so's got millions of dollars. They, they don't have any problems. Just ask so-and-so. So-and-so is honest. They're going to say they have more problems now than they ever had. The amount of money that you have doesn't, doesn't uh, increase or decrease your problems. Every human being's got trouble, right? But if you're in Christ, if you're in Him, you can trust and rely on Him and you're not in that trouble alone. You're not going through that persecution, that fire, that, tr that, that trial on your own. He is with you. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. He will help you through to get past that thing. But these false ministers, just not having love for their brother and sister, just not, I mean, they, there's not, listen, what did Paul say? about meat right he said that you know he knew that the meat that was sacrificed to idols was nothing it was nothing god god gives everything right and he knew the idol is nothing he said but and eating that's not gonna he's not gonna affect him at all because he's gonna give god thanks for whatever he gets but he said that if eating that meat would cause his brother to stumble because of, you know, brother not having that faith that Paul had, and it would cause his brother to stumble, he said, I'll never eat it again. Where is that? 
today. You know, today, I'm going to use this example. So um, we, we're faced with the same kind of thing today, right? Same kind of thing. You know, I'm going to tell you straight up, nobody, I, I don't know of anybody, except maybe maybe little kids like, I don't think anybody likes wearing masks. I don't like it. I hope you don't like it. I hope nobody likes it. Because wearing masks, I don't like it. I, you know, maybe there's somebody who does, and okay, if you like it, then that's that's good for you. I'm glad you can get all the enjoyment out of it you can. I really don't like wearing one. But I do wear it for two reasons. Number one, because... Uh, number one, you can't you can't even enter a business right now with the with the mandate that's out there on masks. You can't even go to a business to buy stuff. Mm, interesting, but you can't even go into a business and buy stuff, do do anything without wearing the mask, right? That's the first part. So it's an instruction from the state. It's not a law. I know it's a guidance. I get it. I understand all that. Um, the second part is that there's a perception out there. There's a perception by people that don't know Christ, and there, and by some that do know Christ, that if you are not wearing a mask out there in their presence, that you somehow are uncaring, unthoughtful, and selfish. You know that these are the arguments. You've heard them. All of us have heard them. And so I'm going to do it because, number one, the state is asking me to do that. It doesn't violate scripture. I'm okay with that. Number two, it's going to give perception that I do care, that I am caring, because I actually do care. Don't want people to get sick. I know it doesn't protect me. I understand that completely. It does not protect me from getting the virus. It lessens the opportunity for me to give the virus to someone else. I understand that. Get it. As a Christian, I'm going to do the things that represent, to the best of my ability, my care for God and my care for fellow man. That is why I do it. I can't say anything about what you're doing. Okay? I can just say why I'm doing what I'm doing. And so it's for love. It's for love's sake. That's why I do it. I'm not saying that you, uh, maybe you have a medical issue or something, you know, you can't do this. I get that. And each one of us has to make an individual choice how we're going to do things with our walk with God meat to eat it or not to eat it mask to wear it or not to wear it something between you and the lord you know and and so i get it i mean i i totally get it i'll be glad when nobody has to do it i mean i'm very much looking forward to that day i'm looking forward to that day when i don't have to dab on hand sanitizer and all that other stuff you know a, I'm looking forward to that. I pray you still wash your hands. It's a good thing. It's cleanliness, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a, but you know, the whole point. If you think that the whole point of all of this is a mask or hand sanitizer or or any of that, if that's the whole point of this, then you're missing the big point. The big point is we, as the church, for us, we're given the opportunity right now to demonstrate we're the church, whether we're in a building or out of a building. We can demonstrate that we're the church by our love to God and our love to fellow man. We, we can be the church. Being the church doesn't mean that I like having to wear this mask or go by these policies or stuff like that. I don't like them at all. Would I like to not have to do any of that? You bet. But I'll do those things if, if, this, if this particular state comes down and says, this is what we want you to do. If it doesn't violate scripture, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to apologize for that because I feel that for, for me, I have to do that because that's what the, the word of God tells me I have to do. I saw a preacher, I saw a post today from a preacher, a well-known preacher. I won't mention his name here, uh, but a well-known preacher posts a post out there. And in his post, he's he's in a uh, he's in a different state, and he was thanking God for being in this other state, because at least uh, the governor's not an idiot. 
calling the governor, inferencing that the governor from the state that he just came from was. That is wrong. We're not to do that. We're, we don't have license from God to criticize, you know, um, those governors like that. They're put in there by God, you know. I don't have to agree with them, and I don't agree with them in, in most cases, most of the time. Um, even in this particular state I live in, I, uh, a lot of things I do not agree with our governor. Not at all. But if he asked me to do something that is not against scripture, then I'm bound by scripture. If he asked me to do something that's against scripture, it's not going to happen. Draw the line. You know, and you have to you have to do that with your walk with God. You're going to have to do that in your life. Without falling into the trap of being nasty and mean and angry and venting and, and ranting, you, you can't do all that stuff. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't help anyone. If you have a problem with it, pray. You want God to give you clarity in that? Pray. You want understanding? Pray. Amen? That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to... Sure, I could get a whole lot of people to just jump on board and, and be all uh, you know, happy if I start railing. But the Bible tells me not to rail. If I start complaining, I could get a lot of people to come on board and, and agree with me. But the Bible says not to complain. I could start talking all this bad talk you know, about the, the governor, his policies and stuff, and get a lot of people to jump on board with that, but the Bible says not to do evil speaking. The Bible tells me to pray for those that are in authority. So that's my obligation. So that's what I have to do. It doesn't say that I have to agree with them, but I do have to pray for them. The Bible says for me to love my enemies. Even when they are not looking out for my good, I need to be looking out for their good. I want them to come to Christ. Uh, you know, Justice uh, Ginsburg just died. We just found that out today. You know, she she stood for the liberal side of, of things. She was uh, very outspoken there. She supported abortion, all of those things. But you know what? She was She was a soul. She died without Jesus. If she died without Christ... That's eternity. I don't know. I wasn't there. You know, did she come to Christ? You know, I, I don't know. But I can tell you that any man or woman that leaves this planet without Jesus Christ as their Savior spends eternity in hell. And I'm not happy for it. Not for anyone. And so, uh, you know, if I can do what I can do to help people, I will. To show them the love of Christ, I'll do it. So we do what we have to do. Because we fear God. Not the governor. Not coronavirus. But God. So. That's it, I think, as far as we're going to go tonight. And uh, I pray that uh, gives you something to chew on. Something to think about. Whatever we do. You know, let's do it for the Lord. It says, the scripture says, let not your good be evil spoken of. It means that although we have freedom in Christ, don't, don't take that freedom that we have in Christ and use it wrongly, you know? Do everything we can to bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. Represent him well. You may only have one opportunity to do it in life. And when that opportunity comes, that you can stand up boldly for Christ, do it. Amen. Well, God bless you. And I pray that you bless, have a blessed night in Jesus. Pray that you are uh, being uh, warm and dry tonight. It's raining. Thank you, Lord, for the, the smoke being, you know, dissipating and being pushed away. And... Thank you for the rain. We really need it. So I'm very thankful for all of that. And I'm thankful for you, especially. I'm thankful for what God is doing in your life. And I pray that you follow him all the days of your life. Well, God bless you. And I pray you can also join us tomorrow night. Encouraging words, 6 o'clock. God bless. Good night.